Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Tactical Magic Podcast. This is Molly Mandelberg, your host, and I have an awesome guest with me today. We are all often on this show, we're vacillating between marketing strategies and business tools and then going way to the other end of the spectrum and talking about spirituality and transformation and transcendence and self-actualization. And that's the kind of episode that you're going to get today. So hang tight for just a second. We'll be right back. It's not just about mastering technology. It's not just about brand or messaging. It's not just about making more money. It's about showing up in a big way so your people can find you. This is about bringing your most wild and authentic self into the hustle and grind. Welcome to Tactical Magic, a business strategies podcast for the warrior goddess entrepreneur. Awesome. So Danielle LaRose has been on the path to ascension for the past five years. Her awakening began when she was faced with chronic medical conditions, chronic medical conditions that limited her ability to walk and threw her into a dark depression. Many doctors weren't able to identify the cause. And so Danielle decided to take her power back and heal herself from the inside through spiritual practices and holistic medicine. Today, Danielle hosts a podcast with her best friend, Daniela called Get Rose, Awaken and Rise to the Spiritual Truth, which aims to share authentic healing journeys and spiritual tools and hopes to help others rise up to become their best selves. My business is called Wild Hearts Raise Up, so I totally resonate with that. Welcome to the show, Danielle. Thank you so much for having me, Molly. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy you're here too. So tell us a little bit more about your story and your journey and how you got to be where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would love to. So my journey definitely started with the crippling medical issues that you referenced before. Um, It was so bad. And for years and years, doctors were telling me I was fine. But at the same point, I had so much pain, I couldn't even walk. And I was 22. So I was like, how am I going to possibly live the rest of my life in this state of pain? Um, And so I started opening up to other things, right? So things that doctors wouldn't tell you about things like a root chakra meditation or, um, acupuncture for certain things, like some things that they wouldn't recommend because they're getting sued or there's legal issues around it. Um, but I really just dove down the holistic path. And for example, when I did a root chakra meditation, um, I would have no pain for about 24 hours. Wow. So I knew that there was something behind it. I knew that I didn't know, like I I had no science behind it, but I just knew that I was not experiencing pain. And so I kept on kind of following that journey. And as I was doing this, I found spirituality at the same time. And I started my ascension journey because I realized that there's such a gift in the pain, being able to open up and think about other things and not immediately bat them down just because they're not proven by others was a massive shift in my thinking. Um, So I started meditating a lot. I started actually seeing spirit, um, realizing things about myself, becoming who I am. I'm a light worker. I'm a healer. I'm here on this earth to really help others. So all of this was going on when I was 22 to 26. And um, I was a little shaken by everything because it feels lonely going through the process. And I had one friend who was also going through the same thing. Her name is Daniela, who actually host the podcast with now, but me and her would talk about three to four hours a week, just so we didn't feel insane (laughs) because things were happening. Like I had this mirror on my wall. It had five panes in it. And one of them just flew off right in front of my face and smashed while the rest of the mirror stayed on the wall. I mean, all these random things start started happening and it helped talking to someone else to kind of guide me through this ascension process and receive the messages that I needed to get from spirit. So that's why I'm here today. I want to talk to people and just make sure that whatever journey they're on, they're not crazy. I love that. So I fully agree. And it's really important for people who are experiencing not normal situations or what they would deem things that feel crazy to understand you're not alone and you're not crazy. And I'm curious, what are some common things that people generally come up with or experience that might lead them to believe that they're crazy or something weird is going on? And 
um, so that we can sort of confirm and remind, like, we might just be on a transcendent <laughs> transformational journey and it's not just you. That's a really good question. I think the biggest one is if you keep on seeing signs, keep on seeing synchronicities, that's actually a message. It's something that you shouldn't just ignore. So if you keep on seeing the number 222 everywhere on a clock, on t-shirts, on license plates, in songs, that's probably something you should pay attention to. And you're not going crazy. You are actually seeing these signs because you're meant to. So I think that's that's a big one. And then seeing spirit, that's a really scary one. So when that started happening to me, I thought that maybe I took too much Tylenol that day. <laughs> <laughs> or didn't get enough sleep or things like that. But if you're seeing an energy, if you're seeing a ghost or something like that, it's also a learning tool. They're trying to communicate with you and they obviously know you're open to these types of things. Your energy is open. It's also really important to protect your energy to make sure only spirits of the light come through. But if you're seeing things like this, it's okay. They exist for people who can see them and you are not going crazy. Super important. We actually had an episode a few weeks or months at this point ago called Talk to the Entities with Dr. Anthony Mattis, which was very much about understanding that there are energies around us all the time. Some of them are, you know, not embodied the way our physical reality says people are embodied now. And some of them are here to contribute and some of them are here with their own agenda just to bug you. And that the ones that are here to contribute, it's really valuable to communicate with them and to connect with them and to commune in such a way that allows them to facilitate whatever they're here to support on this planet or to support you with specifically. And I think anybody who's been in a really hard place, like I imagine that crippling um, pain was a really hard place to be in. It's totally normal to pray, even if you're not a religious person, to ask for help and ask for guidance and support. And that's going to come to you when you ask for it in a variety of ways. And sometimes it's going to be synchronistic and magical. And sometimes it might be scary and uncomfortable the way that support shows up. But if you ask for help, you will find it. And I think it's really amazing to start recognizing. I think those signs you mentioned too, of seeing numbers. For, I see my birthday like five or six times a day, which is 116 January 16th. And I always acknowledge it and say, thank you. Like, thank you to my guides or to my awareness or to the universe, this miraculous creation that we've got called reality. Um, thank you. Like I acknowledge that I see it. I, I take it as a sign that I'm on my path. Or that is a reminder to just be present and be present with my magic and my body and my, you know, my dreams, my choices, whatever. Um, but to not cast those things aside, if it's coming to you on a recurring basis, sometimes that's a shoulder tap. And I think often the pain we feel in our bodies too, or the physical ailments that arise are often our body trying to communicate with us or that bigger message trying to come through and it gets louder the more we're unwilling to listen. So I love that your experience was when you started to listen to this stuff and you started to not just acknowledge it, but to practice and to start integrating what you were learning that that altered the pain because that message was now received that the pain didn't have to be there to wake you up to signal you anymore, which is really cool. Yes. And Molly, that's so important. Pain is the communicator pain is a message. There's a reason for it. It's not good or bad. There, we should not pass any judgment about it. It's something that our body is trying to tell us. It's almost like a screaming child that's like, I need attention. I need something, but I can't communicate other than screaming. Yeah. Like that's what our body's doing. It's screaming for us to pay attention to it. And if we don't, then we get knocked out. We, I mean, that's how that happened to me. I didn't pay attention to it for years. And I got completely knocked out until I had to focus on it. Yeah. So there's ways to avoid that. <laughs> Actually paying attention and listening to the signs. I think that's so cool that you see your birthday all the time. It's important to, to understand what your message is through the, the communication. So you know, okay, this is my birthday. That means spirit's telling me I'm on the right path. When I see my birthday, it's probably a different message, but that's just because I'm a different person and we have different paths. Mm -hmm. So 
I think that um, a lot of people ask me all the time, like, oh, I just saw 1111. What does it mean? I'm like, well, what do you think it means? Yeah. What, what is your heart telling you? Like, listen to your guides, listen to your heart, listen to your intuition, because the signs are signs, but what does it mean to you? What do you feel in your spirit? Yeah. So I was actually just talking to someone this morning about, um, it's about feeling disconnected from you and your intuition about having like so much cognitive, logical, intellectual reasoning around every choice and decision that we make in life and how that can make it seem like we're not connected to source energy or we're not connected to our higher knowing or whatever. Do you have some tools or some ways that one could perhaps turn up that connection to their intuition or connect with it more easily? Yeah, you need to be in tune with your intuition at first starting out. I don't think I was in tune with it. I don't think many people are because we just have ignored it for so long. We kind of listen to what other people tell us to do, tell us to think, tell us to feel. Um, So when I was getting into it, I journaled a lot because I feel like when you just pick up a pen and let your heart speak on the paper, it will tell you exactly what it feels. Whenever I have a big decision to make and I keep on going back in my fourth and fourth in my head saying, oh, maybe I should do it this way. Maybe I should do it this way. Both seem right. When I actually take out paper and pen, I know the answer in about two seconds. Yeah. There's a part, I think also for people out there who are journaling and don't have a notebook, I was just leading a, I've had a lot of calls today already. I'll say it. I was leading a piece with money call a couple hours ago and reminding people that typing is not the same as writing, especially when you're doing magic, especially when you're trying to ask for answers. There's something about technology and there's something about your hand moving on a page with a pen that it's easier to go into that meditative receiving state when you're not on a computer. Um, so I highly encourage people who, if you feel like you have a journaling practice on your like laptop, but you're not feeling connected to source energy or to your intuition or your higher knowing or your guides or ancestors or whoever the universe that doing that with a pen and paper is a more easy path to tapping into that magic too. 1000%. I echo that a ton. Um, my cousin is going through her journey right now. And she keeps on making notes on her phone, which I think is great. You need to be able to remember things like I'm not knocking that tool at all, but there's something about putting it out into the physical universe that makes it even much more powerful. Mm -hmm. Totally. And there's great apps for turning that magic up once you know what it is. For example, I have an app called Think Up, which a friend of mine turned me on to a few months ago. And I'll go into my journal space to get, you know, clear on how I feel about the situation in my life, ask for guidance, ask for wisdom, ask questions of myself to unpack it and unravel it and then distill it down to what do I really want? What do I, what am I asking for? What is the energy that I would like to embody with this? And then I take that from my journal and go into the app to record my own voice saying my affirmations or my, you know, my positive thinking statements. And then I listen to those back on a loop through that app called think up. Um, so there's ways to bring the technology back in to make it like we're making ourselves more productive or we need to remember something, but there is something about the divine downloads coming through your hands in a different way. And that doesn't mean for everyone, like you said, don't take other people's advice, see what actually works for you. My mother is a rapid fire typer. She's been a writer for so long that she does her, her conversations with her guides through typing. And that's just how her flow go- comes through. And oh, wow. I also know that she does it on pages sometimes too. Um, but yeah, super useful. What are yes. some other ways that people, I mean, you guys have a podcast. We're going to talk about that later, but um, what are some of the insights or tools or just encouraging pathways that people could start moving down if they're moving out of I'm crazy into knowing something's coming through me and the awakening process is usually not comfortable. Like what are some kinds of support or some avenues people could explore to aid that adventure? Sure. 
It's so individualistic. So what I'm going to say is very broad. Take what you resonate with. Um, but I, the common themes that I've seen in the Ascension journey are um, acknowledging your fears. So really understanding your triggers, your fears, and how to navigate through life with them. Um, and also inner child work. I think those are the two big things that if you want to start a journey or maybe you're in it and you haven't done this yet, it's, it's really good to do. So with the fears, I would say definitely take out a journal, um, actual paper and pen and just write, I want to understand my fears. I think I'm afraid of blah, blah, blah. And just let yourself go. And maybe you don't get it that time. Maybe it's divine timing and you have to journal next week and see what happens. Um, but all of us really have like three to five core fears. Two of them are probably abandonment and rejection. That's very, very common with everyone. I mean, you get an abandon abandonment wound by being born. When we exit the birth canal, our mother is abandoning us and we do feel that trauma. I mean, babies come out crying. <laughs> so, I mean, most people have this abandonment wound and it shows up differently throughout our lives. So acknowledging your fears and understanding how to use them to your benefit when navigating through life is really, really helpful. And then inner child work is important. I think a lot of people deny their inner child of play. Uh, we're in such an environment that's very work hard, hustle, get rewarded all the time. Uh, but sometimes our inner child just wants to like have a coloring day or blow some bubbles in a yard or something like that. And it's healing to do that. It's actually healing your child and acknowledging this massive part of you that will always be there. So acknowledge your fears and go out and play in the backyard. Yeah. And I think part of that inner child work too is noticing that your feelings are valid and being willing to validate your own feelings. And it doesn't have to make rational sense with the situation that's coming up to trigger you. It could make rational sense to the five-year-old in you that experienced some version of this before. I've been digging at, into that work a little bit more myself lately too. And it's powerful and you can be the one validating what you're feeling. It doesn't necessarily have to come externally. And there's something really beautiful in saying, I'm uncomfortable. Here's what I'm feeling. And not saying that it has to stop or that it's wrong or bad to feel that way, but simply giving yourself permission to allow yourself to feel that feeling fully and like be there for you, have your own back. And if you can include someone who's safe in that process, then beautiful. And it's also really possible to be with yourself in that way. And there are thousands of people out there to support you in that process if you can't do it alone. It's so true. Yeah. And through that journey, we have to become the parent that we didn't have when we were growing up. Even if yeah. your parents were amazing and always there, you might have been missing a key emotion or key nurturing action. And so yeah. we have to become our own mother and nurture ourselves. Yeah. It's, it's such a big step in the journey to be a sovereign being, to be able to nurture yourself in any chaos and always experience peace. Yeah. And that's, that's a possibility. Angle. I think that probably sounds foreign to a lot of people, but it is possible. It's very possible. Yeah. Actually, this year is the first time that I feel like I'm almost there. I don't think my journey is ever going to be complete. <laughs> I yeah. think I'm always going to be learning, I'm but I do feel like I'm fully in surrender this year. And I'm fully able to um, feel my emotions come up, let them go through my body, nurture myself when needed and move on. What a liberating thing to be able to say, because usually the norm of this reality is to be controlled by our emotions and to be like so impacted by our lives that we don't have that awareness or that capacity. Yes. That's I really feel useful. so free. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I cry probably four times a day just because it comes up really quick. I'll cry and then I'll move on, yeah. but I don't have that stuck anymore. Right. Well, that's the difference is when we're willing to feel our feelings and move the energy, 
that resistance isn't there. And what at least Warner Earhart said, what you resist persists. So if we're blocking the emotion, then it becomes like this thing that has to come out in fucky ways later on. So oh, yeah, then it just jams up your throat and you get a huge knot and it blocks your throat chakra. Yeah. Bad or news. it gets turned into anger and it gets expressed at others and it gets, you know, then you're mean to the lady selling you coffee and it's just like, Mm-hmm. Just feel your feelings already, people. <laughs> yeah, feel them. And as you were saying, validate yourself. I mean, I think I cried over, I couldn't open a bottle of pickles the other day or something like that. <laughs> I was just like, I'm really frustrated. I just want to cry for a second because I want to be able to do this. <laughs> yeah. And that's okay. I mean, why is that bad? Yeah. And it's not bad. And I think that's also something that we can fall into. I'm noticing in the healthiest relationship I've been in thus far in my life that I have patterns that can change. And that when I feel anger or when I feel upset, it doesn't mean I'm wrong and it doesn't mean someone else is wrong. And it doesn't even mean that anyone needs to change their behavior. It means that something came up that needs to move. And if it's addressed, it can move and nobody's actions actually are wrong or bad or, and nobody's necessarily needs to adjust their behavior, except for being aware of and acknowledging. And like we said, validating that that feeling is there and then it moves. It's so true. And I honestly, having that in a relationship is so healthy because you're not relying on the other person to do that for you. Yeah. And that's a learning process. I think for all of us, some, some have more dexterity with it than others, but it it's a skill that you practice until you have an acumen with it. Like anything else. Takes a lot yeah. of practice. Yeah. I mean, sure. it's been five to seven years of me doing this. So <laughs> definitely yeah. a lot, not an overnight thing. Yeah. And I mean, having a commitment to it allows us to dig into it more because there is so much light on the other side. I guess I want to infuse that too, that there's a lightness of being that's possible when we do our work and when we show up to our practices and to our healing process, that the end result is freedom and autonomy, as you said, and like aliveness and vitality that most people are never going to choose in their lives. And sometimes I think there is a limiting belief too, that if I choose to heal this stuff, then I won't make sense to my friends anymore, or I won't be able to coexist with people who complain so much, and then I'll lose my family or whatever that is. And the truth is when you start to walk this path and when you fully embody the work that you're doing, whether it triggers other people to leave your life or not, you are an invitation to a greater possibility in the world. And that that energy alone is such a huge contribution, whether or not you identify as a healer or you start a business as a coach or you put a podcast together that just walking through the world from that healer, healing, healed perspective is such a contribution to other people on this planet. And yeah, it's worth doing that work for. Beautifully said. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever we step into our truth. We give others the opportunity to step into their truth. If we stay stuck with them, we're all stuck. Yeah, true. Yeah. And it's not actually a gift to stay on people's level when you're being invited to expand. No, not at all. (laughs) And I, I, people definitely fall away. I mean, I can't have a deep conversation like this with some people in my family, maybe friends that I had in high school We just don't resonate on the same level anymore because I'm way more interested in truth and beauty and happiness and pure, genuine connection while other people are um, not in a negative sense, but are maybe more concerned about like what's on ABC tonight or what what am I going to make for dinner or why isn't this guy texting me back? Which in, in my mind, it's like if you open and expand and see the bigger picture those things do matter, but there's so many other things that matter in the world, love, happiness, joy, things like that. Yeah. Evolution. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, we've only got a few more minutes. So what would you 
what is the best place for people to follow you? How do people find your podcast? Who's your podcast for? Tell us a little bit about where to keep track of you. Cause I bet there's people resonating on your level right now. I would love to, I love my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Get Rose, Awaken and Rise to the Spiritual Truth. And you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Heart Stitcher. It's on all the platforms that podcasts are on. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Get Rose Podcast. You can send us an email, getrosepodcast at gmail.com to connect with us. Um, but really, we started this podcast to have a real raw open discussion um, between each other and between guests that come on share their authentic story. Um, so there's definitely, there's pain and trauma shared throughout the podcast. And we talk about what tools they used in order to heal from that. And I guess, I guess how they got out of the sludge in life. But yeah, I've, I've loved it so far. We've had really good guests and I've learned so much about myself and others. Um, been doing it, been doing it for about two years now. And I'm just excited that it's a portal of love. Awesome. I love that. Any last words of wisdom you want to leave people with? Movement is medicine. Get up and move your body however it wants to today. Mm, powerful. Yes. I'm going to take a walk after this call now. Well, I was going to anyway, but definitely. Perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm super grateful for you, Danielle, and for just your willingness to share your own journey. Cause I think it's easy to go into our own healing world and like tunnel vision into our own processing. And when we're willing to actually take what we've learned, even when we're in the process of learning it and share that on a grand scale that it has the ability to move mountains and shift paradigms. So I'm really grateful that you're out in the world sharing what you're learning and also broadcasting the message of truth and healing and beauty to the world. And I hope everyone listening goes and takes a look at your podcast, subscribe to that podcast, get Rose podcast, and we'll put the link to it in the show notes of this episode so that people can get a hold of it. Um, yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. And I definitely echo the same sentiment to you. Thank you so much for having a show and uh, having a platform to talk about these certain things. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And to everyone out there listening, don't forget you can learn more at wildheartsriseup.com slash podcast. And um, there's some Patreon stuff there if you want to support this podcast to remain commercial free. Um, and as always, keep asking big questions and taking bold action because you are here for a reason. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Tactical Magic. To find out more, please visit our website, wildheartsriseup.com. Be sure to take a second and subscribe to the show and come back next week for another edition of Tactical Magic.